the last time I was just walking around the city was uh, on February 23rd. It was the last day I was just walking around normally and now they just took months of our life and we feel like we grew up in five years for this uh, 43 days. So I just want to feel the freedom of actions again, to be able to choose how I want and to have a good mood to be happy with my life because now I cannot feel happy even in being in such an amazing city. I cannot be happy because I know the people in other countries, in other cities in Ukraine are now eating pigeons and drinking snow. So. My name is Marta Vasuta. I'm 20 years old. I'm Ukrainian. Last four years I was studying in the city of Lviv, the best city in Ukraine. And I am currently a fourth year uh, university student in Ukraine. I was having my TikTok account for years and years and I was just posting normal basic uh, videos for a 20 year old. Uh, some challenges with friends, some lip syncing, some jokes. And when I came uh, to the UK the second time, I've seen that there is not a lot of uh, news about Ukraine from Ukrainians themselves. So I decided that I should try and show a bit more so it will be easier for them to see true content from Ukrainian. So that's when I posted my first video. I came to the UK on February 9th to visit my friends for three weeks as I still had my visa until the beginning of March. And I was unable to return back to Ukraine like a normal way. And I thought it would be better for me and my parents to stay in a safe place. My family is still in Ukraine, but they're in my hometown, which is our away from Lviv. Uh, and it's like the safest part of country right now. Привет. Алло. Привет. Что там, як там? Ой, рада тебе чути. Нічого, світить сонце. Ти чуть-чуть сирен. Сирен не було? Ні, не було сьогодні. Але все нормально, так? Так. Слава Богу. I feel really worried about them because I know they listen to sirens every day for three, four or five times. They have to go to the basement. There are a lot of uh, refugees coming, but as long as there are no like active uh, actions in uh, my hometown, I feel better but I've seen a lot of people who I know lost uh, their friends, their parents, so it's really damaging. It's a book in Russian. The war has affected me in many ways. It, ha it affects everyone. It's our home. It's our home being destroyed by the Russians. We see, you know, cities and towns and all the places that we have memories, you know, that are being destroyed, shelled. People are being killed, innocent people, innocent children, elderly women, men. Um, so every single day, it's, it's difficult to hear all this news. And I think that, you know, after the war, we will all need therapies uh, to to go through, you know, what we have experienced. There has been about 200 bodies that were dug out, but there are still bodies buried under the ruins of the buildings. The whole street, roof, destroyed buildings by Russian shelling. What we do is to continue talking about the war because this has been helping us. It's, a, it's my way to cope with what's happening because as I report, I'm writing about the war. I'm constantly talking about it with the people I'm interviewing or my newsroom and this has helped me you know to process what I'm seeing. The least that I can do right now is to report about it so reporting has helped made me feel better about you know that I'm you know helping Ukraine fend off Russian aggression. I have chosen uh, TikTok as a platform to share all the war content because I feel like TikTok has the best algorithm for that. 
it would be easier to gain people around my location because if I would post something on Instagram, I would mostly be seen by my followers and my followers are, were mostly Ukrainian. So I tried to post it on TikTok just to gain people from London at least. So I mostly get my videos from uh, Telegram channels. It's really popular news services in Ukraine, as you can see it uh, in live when something happens, where people can comment it, when people can react to it. Before February 23rd, I had 400 followers. It were mostly people from my university, from my hometown, some of my friends, and I was just posting videos for myself. I comment all the time <laughs> and it really sometimes bothers me because like i comment so much and people will be like oh i remember you just from comments and now you have like 200,000 followers i was not ready for such a huge amount of people being following me uh, but at the same time i realized people wanted to see a clear image from a Ukrainian itself and that's why they started to follow me and like my videos and share it and I've seen so many people commenting that um, I trust your page, I trust your videos, I know what you post is not a lie because why would you lie you don't get any profit of it. So I really think it helped in some case for other people to see it first because I also had a lot of comments of people saying oh I thought it was a joke how is this an actual war? I thought it was a joke. When professional media is blocked to work, and when the journalists are not protected to work their job, and audience need some information, social media come as a surrogate of the information. They are offering information, but this is on completely another way. Who, who is the source of, on the social media? Common people. Some services or some companies or some organization which uh, have some their own aims why they are putting this information in a circulation. And that makes me a little bit suspicious and it, uh, me and my colleagues are uh, wasting a lot of time trying to check several things. First, what happened, where happened, is this fake or not? And if it is not fake, we're also trying to guess, is it okay to show this on television? But in the same time, cruel pictures have to be shown that people understand that the war is not a game. So for the last few days, our government were telling people to evacuate from the east of Ukraine because it's going to be the most hot spot uh, for the next few weeks with the most of uh, bombings and strikes. So uh, a lot of people were evacuating today, especially from the city of Kramatorsk. And um, Russian forces have uh, launched a uh, missile or a rocket to the train station in Kramatorsk and there were 4,000 people evacuating at that moment. It was 10.30 th uh, in the morning and 59 people uh, were killed, five of them were kids and over three and four hundreds were injured. So there were mostly pictures, the first ones were pictures where there were standing like people's luggage, people's bags, like, uh, and there was a lot of blood on the floor. Uh, next pictures were like a lot of uh, people injured with, like, with without like a leg or without arm or with big holes in their bodies or like dead already laying on the ground. There were kids on the benches, um, a lot of blood, a lot of um, violent pictures. So. It was mostly like right after it happened. Yeah, and here you can also see. So I mostly check all my videos before posting, and I usually don't give like any comments. I just um, put the caption what I seen before, like a date and location, and just a short description of what's going on. So there was not a lot of things I could 
make mistake in and as far as I know all the videos I posted were true because I usually post like just like a video footage not like a repose of some um, news like written news you know and it's it's more difficult to do a fake video new than just a written one Die Strategie der russischen Regierung ist von Anfang an gewesen auf Desinformation zu setzen damit unterscheidet sich das schon von dem, was wir im Prinzip aus sowjetischen Zeiten als Propaganda kennen. Ja? Propaganda war ja begleitet von dem Glauben, das bessere System zu haben. Was wir bei Putin erleben und was wir in Russland in dieser Desinformationskampagne erleben, ist im Prinzip, dass man versucht, möglichst viele Varianten der Realität ähm, einzustreuen, möglichst viele und mögen sie auch noch so absurde Narrative, wie Sie sagen, in die Welt zu setzen über ganz unterschiedliche Kanäle und da kommt auch Social Media wieder als ganz, ganz wichtiges Instrument ähm, äh, zutage, ähm, dass im Prinzip der Zuschauer irgendwann gar nichts mehr glaubt. To be honest, I haven't seen a lot of uh, fake news about the war, like uh, hyperbolized. I only seen uh, news that look like it's smaller than it is. I came here because we are having a protest uh, for support of Ukraine here. It's 10 Downing Street in London. It's right in front of uh, Parliament Square. I want everyone to see how many people are lying here. I want you to see those crying mothers. Some of the mothers will never see their kids again. But let me give you one more thing. It's not Putin who is raping our girls. It's not Putin who is torturing our women. It's not Putin who is cutting up the belly of the pregnant woman and taking the kid out of it. This is Russian people. And I'm gonna call the, I'm saying it in the mic while I can't speak to all of you. This is the genocide of Ukrainian people. There's no need to cry about it. We need to stand up and say for what we, for what stay here for our country, will we? Let's call the world to stop the genocide in Ukraine. Stop the genocide in Ukraine. At the beginning, I was, even when the first war has started, I was also thinking like uh, that a lot of Russians don't support this war. I was still listening to some Russian music, uh, following some Russian influencers, different Russian things, uh, because I was sure that like 90% of people don't support Putin's actions and they have nothing to do about that. And I'm also part Russian. On my dad's side but when this war has started the first day we were we were trying to convince russians to do something there are 145 million of them and they just cannot put in prison everyone so we were posting stories to them we were trying to reach those people to be, because we wanted to save them for from their own government and to save us but now as i also uh look in some Russian media services, Russian same telegrams, chats, Russian influencers. Those people just don't care about you. Those people don't care about what's going in their neighbor countries today, the, the people they call brothers. Uh, yeah, there are a lot of people who support Ukraine, but they, they just support Ukraine on their words. Even people who live abroad, who are not scared of government because they cannot catch them here, for example. They don't post anything and they have a lot of brainwashed friends and they just don't do anything about that. So now I have hate for everything Russian. After I've seen everything what happened to people in which I just, I can see Z sign, I cannot see a Russian flag. I get super angry and I just don't want to see the people. I don't care what they did. I don't care who they support. I just don't want to see them because they are not doing anything to stop it. It's 
Но ну, мне кажется, желание любого здорового психически человека это быстрейшее отстранение Путина от власти и всех его подчиненных. И мне кажется, чем быстрее это произойдет, тем больше шансов у России выйти из этой ситуации с наименьшими потерями. В принципе, любой Человек, который любит Россию, конечно, должен настаивать на немедленном отстранении Путина от власти. И чем быстрее это произойдет, тем будет лучше для всех. Конечно, я об этом мечтаю. So now I want to post uh, a video on TikTok of the protest I attended on Saturday. So I'm choosing some videos. It's 4, 2.4, 2.9. So now it has to upload. I'm missing my freedom most because now I'm really bordered with uh, all the actions I can do. I still cannot live the life I lived before. I also miss just not thinking about bad things every time, feeling like a 20-year-old girl again. I can't come home, I can't see my parents whenever I want, I can't leave the country. The whole life just completely changed and for what? Thank you.